Welcome to Am I Invincible, Part 1. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. Your support keeps us going. Five years ago, Chin Pingan came to this world of cultivation. He had a system but he could not get stronger until he completed 1000 missions. Every task was a trivial matter and his rewards were things that can be used in real life. Even the fishes were system gifts. Sometimes, however, he would receive a crappy reward despite his wish to receive Wi-Fi and air conditioning. Despite his comfortable life, Chin Pingan could sometimes felt he was tired. Right then, a system prompt appeared, a new task had been selected. He guessed he would need to make toys for kids or a couple might be fighting again. To his surprise, he was asked to go to the mountain sect. Chin Pingan was immortal and believed he could not get in. Then he asked the system if it would give him a way to get stronger. The system answered that a man should be strong, giving him three months otherwise he would be wiped out once he failed. Unsurprisingly, Chin Pingan had already expected this. In the past five years, he received all kinds of strange tasks but now all of his hard work might go to waste. However, he was optimistic and believed he could handle the task. Later that day, he started walking on a mountain path when he suddenly remembered something. He did not know where the mountain sect was located. The system told him to be self-reliant to which he retorted he did not count on it at all. To his frustration, he was lost and could not find any clues since an immortal sect was usually hidden in the mountains. In the end, he decided to set tight and wait for something to fall from the sky. It was then that a girl fell out of nowhere while screaming for her life. The sound brought Chen Pingan's attention and made him look to his side. Since his weight bore fruit, he proceeded to catch the fallen girl. Looking at the smoke rising from the ground, he asked for an apology for missing her. After the clouds of dust settled down, he saw the girl lying on the ground unconscious and he wondered why a beautiful girl, who he assumed to be a cultivator, would fall from the sky. After a while, the girl's face twitched. Soon, she woke up from her sleep, revealing her beautiful eyes. She immediately saw Chin Pingan who kept poking her with a stick. The girl immediately retreated a distance away with tears in her eyes but Chin Pingan claimed he did not do anything to her. It was then that the girl noticed something and her eyes widened in surprise. She suddenly fell to her knees while she called Chin Pingan Sr. and begged for help which made him confused. Soon, another group of men appeared behind him. He fell into a panic and realized the girl was being chased. Seeing so many men around, Chin Pingan whispered to the girl to run away. However, the girl kept on kneeling calling for him with a pitiful expression. Chin Pingan knew her request was useless and he could not beat so many immortal cultivators since he was only immortal. At that moment, the group of men fell to their knees without hesitation. They asked for apologies for disturbing him. Confused, he asked them if it was for immortal cultivators liking to kneel. Back at his home, the chickens were wondering when would Chin Pingan return from his trip. The chicken was embarrassed since it was a phoenix, it thought it was unlucky for not being brought by its master. The carp also complained that as a dragon, it still had to nest in the pit. They also thought about the kitchen knife who kept on shouting every day because of hunger and thirst, wanting to kill people all day. The chicken assured everyone that if the master did not want it to cut people, the kitchen knife would not dare. The scene changed and the woman who fell from the sky a while ago was now staring at Chin Pingan with awe as she believed she was not mistaken and he was not an ordinary person. On the other hand, the group of men remained trembling on their knees. Chin Pingan's pressure was so intense they could not get close to him and it was unexpected that the girl, Murong Shua, would meet such an existence. The men were terrified as one look at them made their souls feel they would be annihilated. All of them sensed the same, Chin Pingan was a monster. Seeing their horrified faces, he was confused and stammered with his words. However, it was enough to drive the man to madness, and immediately pleaded to leave. Right then, Chin Pingan realized they were good people. He put on a good face and asked the men to go away. As if their lives were pardoned, the group of men with tears in their eyes dashed away with gratitude. After settling the matter, the girl immediately pounced at him for a hug, thanking him for saving her life to which he clarified he did not do anything and he was only immortal. The girl did not accept his words since a mere mortal would not be able to scare off four Jean Dan stage experts with just his Tao rhyme but the girl believed he had his reasons for saying so. She immediately agreed to his words and unconvincingly proclaimed him immortal. He cupped his fist at her and asked if she was Murong Shui, the holy maiden of the mountain sect. After she confirmed it was her, Chin Pingan told her his plan to go to her sect and asked if they could go together. 
Morong Shui immediately pointed in a direction, excited to have the chance to experience the immortal's journey together with an extraordinary senior. While the girl excitedly thought of her future, Chen Pingan smiled brightly upon thinking he had found a back door to the mountain sect and could experience a flight of immortal cultivators. Time passed by, and he turned impatient. He told the girl he was immortal and could only walk, he was silently expecting her to bring him to fly. Contrary to his anticipations, the girl proclaimed she would walk with him. Later, they reach a river where the girl started cultivating, leaving Chen Pingan on the side with a bored expression. With constant rumbling, water began to gather and whirl all over her body. However, she failed to break through. The tamed whirlpool of water burst apart and turned chaotic. In the end, she was drenched, revealing the smooth skin under her clothes. On the side, Chen Pingan was annoyed about not being able to fly. Hearing the girl's call for him, he immediately asked what was wrong. She walked over to him and said she had a favor to ask. Soon, she arrived before him. Seeing her appearance, he asked her if the problem she wanted help with got anything to do with water. The girl was amazed after his words, declaring she admired him for his wisdom. In his thoughts, however, she was making him unable to look at her due to her wet appearance. Appreciating the view, Chen Pingan was mesmerized for a few moments. Noticing his dazed look, the girl called out softly. Blushing, he said it was nothing and averted his eyes. The girl, on the other hand, was amazed by his mysterious ways of knowing her situation. She called out to him again and walked closer. She slid into his embrace and begged him to help her since she could only rely on him for a breakthrough to which he answered he could not involve in her private matters. He immediately gave her a cup of warm water and explained they would discuss what to do later. He expressed that immortal cultivators had many means to achieve a breakthrough to which the girl answered she could not ask anyone for help. The girl accepted the cup and she was stunned when she took a sip from it. It was then she thought deeply of the meaning behind his words and concluded that instead of observing water and awaiting enlightenment, she must be with water to be enlightened. Soon enough, a feeling of goodness surged within her and she succeeded in breaking through. She immediately kneeled and thanked him for his advice and in turn, she would never forget the great debt of kindness. With a helpless expression, Chen Pingan could only scratch his head in confusion. Later, they reached the mountain sect. Upon arriving, he discovered Morong Shua was the sect master's daughter which made him wonder no more why she could not even dry her clothes. He entered the back door and thought that even the handyman had to have qualifications to enter through the front door which made him happy. Inside a room, Morong Shua told her father, Morong Yunhai, about her journey. He asked her why would such a mysterious man wanted to join the sect. On the side, Ching Xian, an elder of the mountain sect laughed and treat her words as a joke. Annoyance appeared on her face and declared she was not lying and even she too was shocked to know his desire to join the sect. Learning he was outside waiting for their decisions, her father told her to say no more since she must have been deceived by an unorthodox cultivator. He immediately stood from his seat and decided to deal with the liar. Seeing the irritated look on her father, she tried to convince him. Soon, her father stepped outside. His eyes flared up as he saw the man his daughter had brought. He remembered his daughter's words then the man's whole body was emitting qi to which she asked him if he could not see it. Looking at Chen Pingan, Murong Yunai's voice of disbelief sounded, proclaiming the man in front of him was not only emitting qi but was more like his body was pure qi. Seeing Murong Yunhai approach him with large strides, Chen Pingan knew it was the sect master. With a courteous smile, he greeted Miring Yunhai. To his surprise, the sect master bowed deeply and proclaimed he had committed a sin deserving death for letting him wait outside. Believing he was only immortal, Chen Pingan fell into a panic after noticing the daughter and father pair was overly respecting him out of nowhere. When she saw his flustered face, Murong Shua whispered to her father and informed him that the senior was cultivating his mind as a mortal for restraint and it would be better to agree with his words than to anger him. But after seeing his look, her father felt it was unacceptable to think of Chen Pingan as a mortal. Eventually, Murong Yunhai introduced himself and confirmed Chen Pingan was joining his section. Chen Pingan applied to be a handyman as long as they would allow him to stay in a sect. Murong Yunhai immediately denied Chen Pingan's request which the girl angrily contested. With a baffled expression, Chen Pingan wondered why the girl was more anxious than him. Right then, a brilliant expression appeared on Morong Yunhai's face as he declared his choice of resigning from his position as the sect master, proclaiming Chen Pingan as his replacement. His words stunned Chen Pingan and made up his mind to brand Morong Yunhai as crazy. Hurriedly waving his hands, he declined the position bestowed to him. 
This time, a solemn look appeared on their faces, realizing the position of sect master was not good enough for the senior to accept. Morong Yunhai coughed and said he would not be polite. Chen Pingan accepted readily and hoped he would not be kicked out otherwise his mission would be ruined. However, his worries were unfounded after the sect master declared he would be the only sect ancestor of the mountain sect. To his frustration, Chen Pingan could not help but scratch his face, realizing immortal cultivators were difficult to communicate with. Although he could not cultivate, he had heard about the hierarchy of a sect. He was just immortal and not only to be an ancestor but he would not be even qualified to be a disciple. After thinking for a bit, he decided to persuade them. Right then, Murong Yunhai turned around and requested Chen Pingan to proceed to the hall, declaring the matter is settled and the senior would now be the sect ancestor. Suddenly, Murong Shue grabbed her father's sleeve. She expressed that her uncle was in the hall and had the same attitude as him before and it would be bad if he disrespected the senior. After hearing his daughter's words, he immediately dashed away, leaving Murong Shue to entertain the senior. Pointing at the sect master, he asked the girl if there was an internal emergency to which she hesitantly affirmed. Later in the hall, Zhang Qingxian was staring at the treasure in his hand with an interested expression. Right then, seeing Morong Yunhai had returned, he immediately asked if the liar was sent away. Morong Yunhai hurriedly grabbed his shoulders and explained that the senior's strength was unpredictable, further asking him not to be disrespectful later as the senior was already the ancestor of the sect. With an alarmed expression, Zhang Qingxian was in disbelief after seeing Murong Yunhai was also fooled. He immediately stood from his seat and dashed outside to the liar with an annoyed look on his face. The moment he stepped outside, his eyes flew open in horror. He saw Chen Pingan walking as though he was an immortal who came down from heaven. His knees gave in. Kowtowing with sweat trickling all over his body, he asked forgiveness for not welcoming the great master. After he witnessed the elder's embarrassing situation, Murong Yunhai could not help but laugh at him. Within the elder's mind, he was wondering why Murong Yunhai's luck was through the heavens for catching a mighty existence. Chen Pingan, on the other hand, felt his intelligence insulted after seeing so many immortals kneeling in front of him, wondering if it was a courtesy between cultivators. Eventually, he thought it was likely and asked if he should also kneel causing everyone's expression to change. They hurriedly grabbed Chen Pingan and stopped him from his act. Right then, the elder's treasure fell. It bumped toward Chen Pingan's way. Picking it up, he suddenly asked where did you get it? The elder explained that the illusory moon sect disciples had encountered found out that it was an object with an unknown material and they could not open it. Chen Pingan scratched his cheek and said the material was just ordinary wood and inside was only food. Hearing his words, everyone asked him if he could see what was inside. Chen Pingan answered he did not have that skill and explained that he knew about it because he was the one who made the thing. Right then, he remembered the past when he was given a task to make toys for the children. He decided to find some wood and make some luban locks. Back to the present, Chen Pingan explained that the mechanism was broken which was the reason why no one can open it so he could only open it in another way. After searching for a while, he brought out a terrifying knife which immediately spread a destructive aura around the room. Looking at the knife, everyone felt their lives flash before their eyes. Horrified looks were painted on their faces as they instinctively took a step back, realizing the knife held greater power than immortal weapons. At that moment, everyone finally realized Chen Pingan was holding a legendary artifact. As the knife hit the wooded treasure, everyone felt the world rumble as though everything was on the brink of collapse. The elder was so shocked at the sight, he felt the laws of the world had collided. Soon, the wooden treasure was opened, revealing the mystery inside. Chen Pingan turned his head and with confusion, he asked why everyone was hiding far away. They did not answer his question and wondered what was the thing inside to which he explained that it was a candy and he made it as a reward for the children after they opened their toys. As she brought the candy near her nose, Murong Shue discovered a strong spiritual power. Full of curiosity, she immediately swallowed the candy. Right then, a surge of energy flooded her body and she advanced from the first level of pill formation directly to the tenth level. She hurriedly took his hand and thanked him for her helping to save her life and for guiding and giving her a chance to break through. With a hint of shyness on her face, she asked him if she could repay him with her body. Smoke burst out from his nose and his face turned red. The girl was beautiful and her figure was good and now, she was offering herself to him just because of his candy. A moment later, Chen Pingan decided to decline after thinking her father might not agree and declared he did not need her body on such a trivial thing. 
Moral Myunhai, however, was happily giving his approval and believed his daughter's offer was the best way to repay him. Realizing the girl's mentality stemmed from her father, Chin Pingan resolved to bring her to the right path. He explained that chastity was not something she should give just because of his candy. The girl replied that after he came to the mountain, he needed a servant. At that moment, she pounced at him and expressed her intention to be his maid. Seeing Chin Pingan's hesitant face, sadness overwhelmed the girl, and she questioned if she was really bad looking. Glancing at his side, Chin Pingan saw her father's thumbed up, expressing his blessing. The elder on the side turned demonic and asked Murong Yunhai to stop since they agreed to make his daughter the elder's daughter in law. To the elder's frustration, Murong Yunhai asked the elder to snatch his daughter if he had the capability since he could not prevent his daughter from her desire. The elder seated in anger after seeing Murong Yunhai kept a great god in his sect. Right then, the elder thought of his son and maybe he could also offer him to the senior. As if sensing the elder's sinister thoughts, Chin Pingan could not but tremble in horror. Chin Pingan felt his body turn cold and wondered what weird things the elder was thinking about. After hugging each other for a while, he asked the girl to let go of him. Contrary to his request, the girl tightened her hug and declared she would never let him go. Looking at the system display, Chin Pingan could only sigh after discovering there was no normal person in the sect the system threw him. Fortunately, his task to join the mountain sect had been completed. Chin Pingan then discussed his job and found out he was only needed once the sect made some important decisions or encounter unsolvable difficulties. In the end, Chin Pingan directly asked if they could fly him back home. Later, they brought Chin Pingan back to his home with a teleportation formation. However, seeing his depressed expression, Murong Yunhai was shocked. Although they traveled so fast, in the senior's eyes, it was as slow as turtle speed. Unknown to them, Chin Pingan was complaining inside how the speed was too fast and he did not feel that he had flown. Walking inside, he asked everyone to come and have tea before they leave. Sighing in relief, Murong Yunhai asked if he could arrange a better place to which Chin Pingan politely declined since he could not leave his fish and chickens. Right then, the surrounding aura intensified, the chicken revealed a glimpse of its might. Everyone's eyes widened as they felt their bodies freeze in terror. Noticing their unsightly expressions, Chin Pingan asked if something was wrong. While wiping away their cold sweat, they answered Chin Pingan they were alright and only felt out of breath for a moment. Realizing it was a bunch of weak humans, the chicken turned its head away in boredom. Chin Pingan hurriedly proceeded to prepare tea and asked everyone to tour his courtyard while they wait. Everyone pleaded for Chin Pingan not to go but their cries were all for naught. Horrified looks appeared on their faces as they realized it was all over. They had never experienced what they had witnessed today. A peach tree that was surrounded by chi. A fish pond surrounded by chi. Chickens surrounded by chi. Even the broom rhymes with chi, it was a whole courtyard overflowing with chi. Looking around, Murong Shui was terrified and her father believed the senior was testing them so they needed to hold on. At this moment, with all the terrifying treasures around, everyone was at the end of their ropes. A second later, an expression of pain appeared on Morong Shua's face. She felt her chest tighten and called for her father with great difficulty. Right then, Chin Pingan's light cough was heard. In an instant, the terrifying entities in the courtyard broke into cold sweats. The pressure they emitted vanished without a trace and everyone immediately felt relieved. Morong Yunhai suggested they should check the ancestor even though he volunteered to prepare their tea. Everyone agreed to him and proceeded to walk inside. After he opened the door he saw Chin Pingan who was choked by the tea and called out for him. Chin Pingan told them to sit down since the tea had just been brewed. Turning around, he saw everyone's pale expressions as sweat trickled down faces. He wondered if they had done some exercise in his yard. He thought about it and concluded they would not be so tired since his yard was small. Looking at the girl's tired appearance, Chin Pingan assumed she was the culprit. With a slight blush on his face, he dismissed his thoughts and poured everyone's cup of tea. The energy fluctuating around the tea gleamed with heavenly radiance capturing everyone's mind. They assumed the tea was some elixir and its might should be comparable to the ancestor's kitchen knife. As he brought the tea and took a whiff of its aroma, he was instantly invigorated. Everyone's spirit was lifted. The spiritual root determines the speed and purity of spiritual energy absorption. Without hesitation, Murong Shui drank her tea. Seeing various expressions on their faces, Chin Pingan wondered if something was wrong with his tea's taste. The next second, no one waited no more and drank their tea as though they had been dehydrated for many years. Soon, everyone asked for a refill. 
After they heard their ancestors saying there was not enough, everyone felt their hearts ache and cried in despair. Chin Pingan scratched his head and reasoned he had drunk all the water and now there was nothing left. The elder suddenly smiled and reached for his storage ring. The next moment, the elder raised his hand, proclaiming the water had arrived. Anger appeared on Chin Pingan's face and sent everyone out. Outside, he waved them away and said drinking too much would harm their health. After they bowed and thanked him for his teaching, Chin Pingan looked at their departing backs and wondered what he had taught them. Now that they were out of his sight, he sighed and decided to go shopping in the town for some food to eat. In another place, the sun blazed with scorching heat. An old man glanced at the sky and noticed a sign of epiphany. He was the former ancestor of the mountain sect and at this moment, he decided to watch the sun for a chance to break through the bottleneck. Right now, he could not make any mistakes. Soon, the sun was moments until its apex. The old man cleared his thought and focused his mind. Right then, his chance had come and he was almost there. At that moment, however, a loud voice called out, resulting in him vomiting a mouthful of blood. The old man's aura surged chaotically as heard the man who arrived proclaim he brought some great news. The man was Morong Yunhai, and after noticing something amiss, he carefully asked the old man why he was upset. In an instant, the old man unsheathed his blade. With anger bursting uncontrollably in his heart, a golden silhouette of a lion materialized on his back as he charged forward, proclaiming he had bad news for Morong Yunhai. Morong Yunhai was beaten by his father and his screams could be heard from miles away. Zhang Qingxian and Morong Shua were awkwardly watching from the side, thinking the old man was happy to see his son. Soon, the beating stopped. Morong Yunhai told his father that the senior could help him break through. His father sat tiredly. He told that his cultivation was destroyed by Morong Yunhai. However, he was unconvinced so his father dared him for a bet. Everyone then agreed and each of them announced their net worth as their bets. Their confidence alarmed Grandpa Morong. Seeing him fall silent, Morong Yunhai dared him again. In the end, he slapped Morong Yunhai's face and asked him to lead the way. Soon, they arrived outside Chen Pingan's courtyard. Grandpa Morong was disappointed at the shabby place. Learning that Chen Pingan regards himself as a mortal, Grandpa Morong commented it was only a play of a liar. He stepped inside. At that instant, his body trembled and his eyes flew up in despair. Morong Yunhai and his daughter immediately called out to him with worried faces. Grandpa Morong fell on his knees, discovering he had entered an immortal's residence. He was horrified as the pressure made him unable to move. Suddenly, a bright light appeared out of thin air. A red-haired man dashed toward everyone. The chicken on the side was startled and immediately asked the man to stop. The red-haired man missed Grandpa Morong, who was dumbfounded, by a hair's breadth. Before he could stop, his momentum generated a whirlwind. Amidst the smoke, Morong Yunhai recognized the red-haired man. It was Chin Pingan's kitchen knife. Grandpa Morong, who had just witnessed his life flash before his eyes, wondered what kind of treasure was the kitchen knife. Kitchen Knife wanted to cut Grandpa Morong since he concluded he was not a good person and it would be better to cut him off. The chicken answered that the old man was a fool and after being cut, he would become more stupid. When the Kitchen Knife lets Grandpa Morong go, he was shocked after seeing something beyond an immoral weapon and the chicken, which is supposed to be the king of beasts, the phoenix. Soon the Kitchen Knife closed his eyes. He turned into a wisp of light and he warned Grandpa Morong to behave or he would be killed. Before Grandpa Morong could reply the kitchen knife went back inside. Grandpa Morong immediately bowed at the chicken for its mercy. On the side, Morong Yunhai asked his father about the bet. With an annoyed face, Grandpa Morong approached his son. With a slap, he scolded Morong Yunhai for not caring for his father's life. Morong Shui immediately calmed Grandpa Morong and told him to bear with it and wait for the senior to come back. Outside, Chin Pingan saw the group had returned. However, he did not want to make tea for them. Thinking of this, he wondered if he should hide. 